Hi everyone, my name is Nick, and today we're going to talk about five unusual, interesting peperomia. I believe a couple of months ago I did a very similar video, five interesting, unusual philodendrons, and I think this is a really fun topic to embellish on, bringing light to lesser known species of plants amongst genera or groups of houseplants that are receiving a lot of attention on social media. So I think philodendron and peperomia, check that mark right there. So we're just going to talk about five peperomia that I just really don't hear anything about. So the first one I want to talk about today is the ever so lovely peperomia dolstedii. Uh, and this is a really succulent peperomia and it grows in kind of a trailing or cascading manner. Of course, it kind of works its way up first and then kind of starts to fall over as it gets a little heavy, as you can see here. This is one I actually got from my friends at the Potted Elephant. And this has a very similar look to parallel peperomia or the still peperomia, which is uh, Peperomia tetragona, or formerly Peperomia pudiolita. There are just so many names. Um, but this also kind of reminds me of a combination of that Peperomia with Peperomia quadrangularis. And these are both uh, pretty popular Peperomias on the market. So the fact that this one just kind of shares uh, th the appearances of those plants just really makes me love it even more because I'm such a big fan of Tetragona and quadri Quadrangularis to begin with. So Dolstedii really strikes that note for me. So I'm really obsessed with this one. It's it's much more succulent than the, the Pudiolata or the Tetragona and the Quadrangularis in in my home at least, it's much more succulent. I'm sure in greenhouses it might grow a little bit differently, but uh, this is just so phenomenal. It's so fun to watch it grow specifically because the leaves are so succulent and have like so much a pattern of venation to them. It's so nice to see these grow. I will say, Peperomia tetragona is a plant that I have struggled with spider mites within the past, and this one, I definitely noticed uh, the spider mites on this as well. I think they really like to hide in the, the kind of like ridges on the undersides of these leaves, so it's just something to look out for, but as this is a very, very succulent plant in nature, um, I've never really found those spider mites to be anything more than just a minor nuisance, so they don't really affect the appearance of the plant whatsoever. It's just something to keep your mind on. Oh, and as for watering and sunlight, I'm keeping this a couple of feet away from a southern facing window, and I do not water it very often as this is a very succulent peperomia. Uh, I'm probably watering it like every 10 to 14 days, so I am really letting this dry out. And the second one I want to talk about today, ooh, this is a really lovely one. So this is a peperomia turboensis. So this looks very similar to the watermelon peperomia. I feel like a lot of these peperomias I'm going to talk about today are like very similar to like really popular peperomias, but have their own niche characteristics that I just really enjoy. So for this one, uh, it's got much more like metallic silver coloration, and it also has um, some lovely like red on the new growth when it comes in that I really enjoy. You can see that this one <laughs> is really funky because I've been growing it inside of a glass cloche for a good amount of time since the entirety that I've been growing this plant. So this and some other of the more unusual out there peperomias, uh, keep in mind these are uh, plants that are growing in the rainforest, so they're used to a lot of humidity. So many of these peperomias are more terrarium species, so they might really uh, take better to the conditions of inside a terrarium or a glass close, just like how I'm growing this peperomia turboensis right here. But <laughs> It's just so cool. I actually had knocked a leaf off uh, when I was putting the glass cloche on one time a while ago, and I just stuck that leaf back into the soil right here, and you can see I actually have another little baby peperomia ter turboensis growing in here as well. So it's a very easy plant to propagate. All peperomias you can just simply propagate by uh, cutting their petiole. The petiole is basically the stem that connects the leaf to the main stem. And if you just cut this, and I just put it in this very uh, well-draining soil mixture here, but you could just put it in some sphagnum moss or some water, and you can watch it root up before your eyes. So they're very easy plants to propagate. But this Peperomia turboensis, <laughs> it's just so cool. I love the coloration. It's definitely a more out there Peperomia in my collection. So I've really been enjoying this one. Um, it practically takes care of itself in its glass clo cloche. That's the one thing I really enjoy about plants inside those enclosures is that they really do take care of themselves because they just hold on to moisture longer, but they don't seem to mind holding on to that moisture, specifically because you're putting plants in those conditions that want to stay really moist. So. Um, this plant is one I'm growing, and the pep the Piper Parmatum, if you guys are familiar, is another plant I'm growing inside a glass cloche, so just kind of a tip about plants that are a little bit more needy, let's say. 
One that I should put in a glass cloche, but I do not currently have in a glass cloche is this Peperomia Silver Bandit right here. And you can see um, from kind of like the brown edging and just, just the small way that the, the leaves are growing in, they're kind of just like a little curled, uh, that this could really use more humidity. So um, once quarantine is over, I'll definitely go out to um, the Ikea or a thrift store and find some kind of glass Gla glass, glass um, container or vessel that I can use as a cloche for this particular plant because I'm really quite fond of this. So this is Peperomia Silver Bandit. This is a collector Peperomia. It's, this is not one you would see uh, um, at a local garden store. This is one I ordered online uh, from a specialty grower and I, I just adore it. I've been a Peperomia fan for a number of years now and this one I just never really heard of but it kind of had some similar characteristics of say the Peperomia rana verde or the Peperomia obtusifolia and kind of just the manner that it grew. So this one kind of just caught my eye for being, you know, similar yet different, which is what I was saying with some of these other peps. It's kind of the theme with a lot of these Peperomias. Uh, you can see, I think this leaf is kind of faded out a little bit, but you can see that uh, distinct silver line that this Peperomia gets, which is where it gets its name, Peperomia silver bandit. And this is actually a species, so it's not a hybrid or anything like that. Um, but I just think it's so lovely. I had never really heard about this plant. I never hear anything about it at all, and I never talk about it. So I figured it would be a moment to pull this Peperomia uh, Silver Bandit off the shelf and also make it clear to me that I do really need to pay it some more attention. I do water this plant pretty often as it's a much thinner leaved Peperomia compared to uh, like the Dolstedii and the Turboensis. So I I'm watering this plant pretty often. I'm probably watering it every couple of days. And I do grow this one right directly underneath a grow light in my bedroom. So it is receiving a good amount of humidity, but just giving it that glass cloche. Uh, glass cloche. Glass cloche is just that step I need to take to make this plant even more happy. So the fourth peperomia I want to talk about, I think I talked about this recently, and I think it looked probably a little bit better because I think I had put in Put, in, put a smaller plant inside here to kind of fill it out more, but I had recently moved this plant into another condition. Let me just tell you the name of this plant first. This is a Peperomia trinervus, and I just adore this Peperomia. There is just so much to love about it. I'm sure you guys can see just that venation that's so lovely. The back sides of the leaves have a little bit of a maroon coloration to them, which I am a huge fan of. But this is just an uncommon Peperomia. It's, it's a really great one for terrariums. It does appreciate a good amount of light. So let me just tell you, quick backstory about this plant. I've been growing it in a southern facing window for probably like a year and a half um, by the time I decided I wanted to move it because it was just getting a little chlorotic, but it was growing really, really well. So I had uh, potted it in this pot with another Peperomia trinervus to kind of fill it out. And then I moved it on top of my refrigerator, which is like eight feet away from a southern facing window. And that plant that I put inside was just like, no, this isn't good enough for me, and it just died off. But um, everything that's left is from when I was growing it in its prior condition. So it seems to still be happy, and I really like where I have it hanging on the side of the fridge because uh, the side of our refrigerator is black, and this just like weird green, neon, red coloration that this plant has just really stands out so brightly against that black refrigerator. So I'm really obsessed with it, but um, I probably should consider in the next year or so, maybe moving it back somewhere a little bit brighter. So I'm just going to enjoy it for a short while in its spot now. But let's talk about the care because I am just going on a, I'm getting a little off topic. I do water this one pretty regularly as these leaves are quite small and I can usually feel they're quite succulent right now. My taco test, if I talk about this before, I've talked about it in so many videos, but I try to fold up the leaves like I'm folding them up like a taco shell. So if I was to fold these leaves right now, like a taco shell, they would snap and break. So I know that this plant does not need water because they still have succulents in the leaves. They still have water in the pot, in the plant, it's good. But when this soil dries out, the plant is going to lose that succulence that these leaves have, and I'm going to be able to fold these leaves very freely up into a taco shell-like shape. So that is how I know simply when to water my peperomias rather than sticking my finger or moisture meter into the soil and kind of second guessing myself if it's time to water, I can just feel the plant and know it's time to water this plant. So peperomia trinervus, a really wonderful peperomia. I really wish I heard a lot more about this, but I just really don't, again, see anything about this peperomia. But this one, 
out of the four I've talked about so far, I'd say is one that looks very uh, unique. It doesn't have another Peperomia in, in under my knowledge that it looks very similar to. So that's why this one really stands out to me amongst the rest. Same with this last one we're going to talk about, which is Peperomia elongata. And this is another one I just absolutely adore. This is a very large leaf Peperomia. Uh, many Peperomias are much smaller leaves. As you saw, the last four plants I talked about had leaves that were, you know, about the size of a half dollar coin or smaller, um, while these ones are much larger than that. So I think that's something, let alone just to really enjoy about this plant because that is just so unique. Um, and the leaves are really, really succulent as well. Uh, this grows in more of that manner, as I was saying, of like the Peperomia obtusifolia, which is just your standard Peperomia that you would see if you walk into a big box store that kind of grows in like a zigzag stem manner. So it's such a cool Peperomia, that vein that just comes down the center and it kind of works its way out, I think is so cool. It's fuzzy, it's but it's, it's fuzzy, but it's shiny at the same time, which I think is really cool and smooth. Like, oh, there's, it's so cool. The stems are the fuzzy part if I um, have to show you guys. And also the undersides of the leaves are very felted, but um, the, the front of the leaf is very shiny and uh, smooth. It's got like a cuticle on top. So it's, there's so much to love about this plant. I think I could just keep going on pointing out the characteristics clearly that I am so obsessed with. Oh, but I do have to point out the stems or the petioles, I'm sorry. I don't know if this is gonna focus because I can't see the monitor. Let me pull it this way. The stems on this plant are so gorgeous. They're like enigmatic with red spots. So it's such a small feature, but it's just something every time I pull up this plant, I'm like, oh my God, those petioles. I am so obsessed. Um, this is one I do not water very often. This is a very succulent peperomia and I could tell if I watered this too much, it would rot. So I have it in a very perlite heavy mixture and I'm watering this probably like every two weeks. But once again, I can use my taco test to feel in these very succulent leaves. Um, if it is folding up, it needs a drink, but as it is right now, not folding up because it's still very succulent and the soil is pretty moist. I know this plant does not need a drink. In fact, if I gave this plant more water, it would probably rot in a short amount of time. So Peperomi elongata, a really fantastic Peperomia. This is one that I got from Steve's Leaves, who is known for growing some a more interesting, unusual Peperomia. So definitely check out his website. Um, but that's gonna about do it for today's video. Five interesting, unusual Peperomias. I think Peperomias are so incredible because of the vast assortment that exists. There is just so much to love about them. Do let me know your favorite unusual Peperomias in the comments. I would really love to hear. And if there's any Peperomias that you think I should look out to add to my wish list, please do let let me know because I am running out as I'm just starting to acquire many of them and I just need some more to add to my wish list. So thank you in advance for that. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at Philly Foliage, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.